heaven's sake, get on with it. Oh, go on, don't just sit there. Boy, it's a point and click, and it's fucking Starship Titanic. If you aren't aware, Starship Titanic is the brainchild of the late great Douglas Adams, author of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy series, the Dirk Gently books and stuff, and it's all really British, like just super British. Douglas Adams made a couple of games. He made the text adventure game for Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and that, that's a massive troll of a game that I don't think will make for a very good video because, you know, text adventure. Someone's never seen this show. But Starship Titanic is a massive, beautifully rendered, for the time, point-and-click extravaganza about a luxury hotel in space, the Titanic, mentioned in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy books as a great big awesome ship that suffered spontaneous mass existence failure and disappeared, only to reappear in this game crashing into your house. Luckily, your house was quite soft. There's a book, too, not written by Douglas Adams, instead written by Terry Jones, reportedly in the nude. I can't show any pictures. This is actually going to be a hard one because some famous British comedians show up in here and they're most well known for activating the overused reference capacitor in my helmet. I'll tell you what, this game is special. It has its own proprietary interactive language engine called Spooky Talk. So you can talk to the robots and they have thousands of recorded lines. Back in the day, this thing came on three CDs. Three CDs! What's that like? Two gig? Holy shit! So basically, the ship was sabotaged, and you have to go on a scavenger hunt to find all the pieces of the ship's AI, Titania, and since she's all discombobulated, so are all the robots on the ship. Fentable, the doorbot, a sometimes lucid old British butler type who is usually no help. I just hope that you can sort out these problems, because none of us can. We're all robots, you see, and what's happened is that the ship's central intelligence has been lobotomized. Sabotaged, if you ask me, and it's left us all unable to function properly. And you may find that we're all a little doolally. And then there's Craig. Hi, I'm Craig. I see you're not carrying any luggage. That's great. I can take a little time off right away. He's a surfer dude trying really hard to pull off that voice and, uh, never really, uh. Yo, surf's up. We're in space. Don't you just hate robots when they don't understand? Give it another go. Okay, take me to my room. You can send small things through the succubus, so don't waste my time with menial tasks. You saying I'm small, Lampface? Damn these cheap translator chips. Give me that a different way, will you? Okay, you're useless. Fuck off. You know something? I'm getting really bored by some of the stuff you're coming out with. Leave! I mean, whatever, he's a fucking moron. And Marcinta, the desk bot who I hate in her stupid bell face. You've been assigned to Super Galactic Traveler Class, Elevator 3, Floor 31, Room 15. And don't come whining to me for upgrades, because you won't get one. Nobby, the lift bot who takes you up and down and jabbers on about things endlessly, and I kind of feel bad for him. He seems like a lonely old man, and I don't want to hurt his feelings, but I just don't give a fuck about him fighting the Kaiser. I don't suppose you were ever a military man, military woman, thing? Nah, silly of me. Let's keep it simple. I goes up, I goes down. Which is it to be? The Mater Depot, whose name escapes me at the moment, who is a confrontational Frenchman who got dismembered somehow. I'm not really going into the story here. It's impossible to explain what's going on in this game and also try and get into the story. You will die here. Here. Here on my very own hearth rug. There's the succubus who delivers things through a tube system that makes me want to die. You've got mail. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> You've got the barbot who's completely useless. I'll get you one just as soon as you fix this loop. And then there's the parrot, played by Terry Jones, and I hate this parrot. I hate it. It makes me think that God is dead and that he never loved the human race at all. You are entering parrot space! Tickets, please! Show your passports! Get a bloody move on! Give us a nut! Give us a nut! Give us a bloody pistachio! You hear him all the time, you think he'd be stuck in this cage, but no, he's everywhere and squawking and... Hey, I'm getting bored with my eyes! Got anything that'll make him bubble? <laughs> okay, so you're working around these fuckers trying to find all of Titania's pieces. Five cores for a brain, two ears, two eyes, a nose, a mouth. So, eleven pieces. So you get on the ship and Marcinta sets you up with a terrible room. 
Well, you certainly won't like the room you've got then. You've been assigned to Super Galactic Traveler Class, Elevator 3, Floor 31, Room 15. Super Galactic Traveler Class, which means when this ship hits an asteroid, everybody in these rooms is dead, and they'll be better for it. Look at all these buttons. They each control a piece of the room, and I'm just going to explain how this works, and you can judge for yourself if this is total bullshit. You have to pull out two tables and then drop out the bed, and then you have to get on the bed, and you have to watch TV to see that you want a room upgrade. Super Galactic Traveler, this could be your luck, luck, lucky day! Yes, you may already have won an upgrade to second class and a whole new world of luxury. And you're like, great, I want a room upgrade. Good stuff, right? So you go back to Marcinta to get out of this death trap for poor people and into a death trap for the upper middle class. Greetings, biped. Oh, I do wish they wouldn't do this. It's very bad for passenger discipline. Oh, very well, let me see. I've assigned you to a second class stateroom, room one, floor 20 which you will reach by Elevator 3. Yeah, this is nice, but I'm the only guest on the ship, and I think I deserve better. And if I want to get into a first-class room, I have to talk Marcinta into it. Okay, the robots have to sometimes be in a better mood, and to do that, you need to adjust their cell point settings, and those are in a room down the hall here, and this one is for her. They're not labeled, they're all just hints, so I just can't imagine why no one has been able to fix these robots. Be nice if I could do that. Maybe get these guys in a better mood. Fuck you. Play the game, silly. Uh-huh. I'm just gonna try adjust your cell point settings real quick, buddy, okay? Oh. Oh. I know I'm gonna pay for that, but god, that felt good. So anyway, Marcinta is a sweet grandmotherly type now, and she lets me get one of them first-class rooms. Greetings, dear biped. Oh, I don't see why not, dear. The rooms are all empty, aren't they? Pity to waste them. And you've had such a difficult time. And there we go, I beat the game. Nah, no, it's so much worse than that. It's so much worse. Anyway, remember that time we watched TV? Well, if you went past that channel that told you you won a thing, you probably missed this little public access show of a wall with a chevron on it. See, each area has its own chevron, and you collect them, and can edit them, and create them, and this camera shows you one, but it's reversed because it's upside down, so you gotta do that, and it points you to a first class room. What's in there? Well, lights. You can click on the lights, and you can find out one of them is loose, and you can't do anything about that. You can't touch it. You have to know that you call the bellbot over to do it. Bellbot needed urgently. Your bellbot at your service. Oh yes, excuse me, bellboy. There's a suspicious light in my stateroom. Could you just remove it for me, and then give me that piece of the ship's AI there? There, yes, thank you. For the use of script, but no can do. Oh yes, thank you very much. Oh yes, good chap. Good chap you are. No can do. So I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm getting hints to these things, things I know I need to do, but you have no idea how to do them. I have 50 goddamn fires to put out on this ship, and I have no idea what the fuck. The barbot is stuck in a loop and I have to help him. The Mater D needs me to change his music in a locked cabinet that he doesn't have the key to because it's on his arm, which is somewhere. His other arm has one of Titania's cores in it, but the music thing is necessary and there's a music room with a console that I can't for the life of me figure out. One of the lifts is broken, I assume, because the lift bot inside it lost its head at the bottom of the ship. There's a corpse in the restaurant that the Mater D bot doesn't want disturbed. He won't let me eat at any of the tables and is really confrontational. Sadly, Sudam, we are very busy tonight and the other tables are all reserved. And my favorite thing, which is that I need to get a long stick to press this button to open this thing to get a hammer so I could break the glass in this room. Here. Don't worry, kids, I'm gonna sort all this out because there's sweet rewards at the end of this game. Huh. Press button to disarm bomb. I didn't know there was an armed bomb, so... The Mega Scuttler is now armed and preparing to explode. This will be a fairly big explosion, so please stand back about 22 miles. Oh, hi, John Cleese. You're here to fuck me over, too? I'm glad. It's just not right without you. Maybe you can call up Michael Palin to knee me in the balls, get Eric Idle to put pins in my eyes, summon Graham Chapman's spirit to shove a broken chandelier up my ass. Don't activate the bomb, kids. Don't do it, because it counts down from 1,000, and if you don't get back to it and start putting a code in to confuse it and make it lose its place, you know, the robot, the counting machine, loses its place. And made me lose count. <clears throat> Re recommencing countdown. Now, 1,000. That'll keep you busy for a while, won't it? There's a phrase to disarm the bomb, but I swear I don't know it. I gotta get Nobby's head back to him at some point, too. Go oh, blimey! Hello? Step me vitals and pickle me dagwala. Must have lost me head for a moment there. Uh, where were we? 
people think I owe you a vote of gratitude. No problem, man. No need to lose your head. <laughs> you what? You what? You what? Fuck you. Now, there's a good amount of hints in this game. If you explore the whole ship and go everywhere you can, not counting the dozens of floors that are basically the same, you'll find stuff to do. For example, on the promenade deck, there's a flock of starlings flying around, and at the bar, you need to make a drink for the bartender because, of course, and one of the ingredients is a flock of pureed starlings, and the other ingredients are a crushed television, a lemon, and vodka. Now, I'm just gonna explain how in the living fuck you might get to this point, okay? Like, the starlings are flying in front of a fan, and because I'm a sick and deranged person who is actually shaking from the lack of violence in this game. I want to send those birds in there. That's what needs to happen. But I can't activate the fan because the fuse is missing. Where's the fuse? It's on the corpse of one of the ship's designers sitting dead in the restaurant, which I can't get to unless I poke the Mater Depot's butt like 50 times. Oh, be gentle with me. Aha! Now I have you! Never trust a fighting waiter in his prime! You do not arouse me. You are boring to me now. Excuse me, now I prefer to hum. <laughs> Fuck, it's the green fuse, not the blue fuse. So he has a fuse, and that fuse belongs in the fuse box in Leovinus' study next to Titania's chamber in the heart of the ship, behind a bunch of warnings about stuff that doesn't really matter. And then there's the fuses for chicken. Yeah, the chicken fuse. Because if you don't put that in, then the chicken dispenser in Super Galactic Traveler class won't give you what you need. And then there's a fuse for the fan, which doesn't really look like a fan icon, but whatever. And then there's a fuse for the Arboretum, where you can change the seasons. The red one? I don't know what the red one does. There's plenty of straightforward puzzles in this game, too, you know. Like, you have to use that long stick to knock a lemon off the tree in the Arboretum. But you also have to use that same stick to knock one of the cores out, because that's there. And you have to turn the setting to winter so the canal can freeze so you can get to Tanya's mouth off of one of the gondola bots. Which, to do that, you need to have both the Mater D bot's arms, but they come with a key and a piece of Titania. So you gotta go to the music room and look at the patterns carved into the chairs to make the right tune, record it, then put it on in the restaurant so that the Mater D bot loosens up and drops those things. So then you can put the arms on the switches inside the gondola bot so that it drops the mouth. And then... Wait, what the fuck was I talking about? Oh yeah, the more straightforward puzzles. Like when you have to get to Tanya's ear, right? You gotta know about the parrot and how his two favorite things in the world are chicken and pistachio nuts. Ah! The bearer of chickens? I don't think. Isn't that like me eating another primate? Because gibbons are fucking delicious. Anyway, you gotta pick up the parrot, listen to him squawk, and then put him in the succubus, but make sure to set a destination, and if you don't, it might get lost, because see... <sighs> uh, I think that got lost. You'll have to see Mother. Okay, where is Mother? In the basement. Where's yours? Probably still at Rikers, at least I hope. So where's the basement? I would like to go to the basement. Hello? There's me settings gone. What is this fucking train spotting? Why can't you talk like Brits? That sort of thing is down to successful intellectuals like yourself, sir. Okay, where is Mother? In the bilge room. Where is the bilge room? Remember the elevator you took to get into the ship? Just hop in and press one of the buttons. Wow, that was actually helpful. Thank you. Yeah, I worked as a coffee machine once. They tried to sack me, but I told them they had no grounds. Ha! You're the first robot to be helpful. I will not forget this. Thank you. In the interests of safety, please do not overload your bellbot. Now fuck off. Of course. It's in the elevator I would never have thought to ever visit again. Of course it is. So this part is very adventure game, right? You gotta put the parrot in your inventory, which you never want to do, and wait for him to fly away so he can leave a feather. And then you send the feather through Mother, but then Mother sneezes up a corpse with a core and a blue fuse in it. You know, the blue fuse, which I need to kill all those birds. But then you see now that I can use the succubus system correctly because it's not clocked up with a dead person. I gotta take the parrot and send him to my second class room so he can get out and eat a bowl of pistachio nuts, revealing that the bowl was one of Titania's ears because I can't just dump the fucking bowl out and take it. I think that was what I was trying to do in the first place. I- okay, I have to use the parallel elevator to get places and I hate it because it's like a loading screen where you don't actually need the time to load things because you could run this game on a goddamn Pentium 90, but you sit there for a minute and the way it works is that both of these walls have the control console on them and they look the same, so you'll try to exit one way. Please exit other side. This is very confusing, I know. 
Then why would you make it like this? So I bet you're wondering, like, how in the fuck are you gonna get a flock of pureed starlings, a crushed television, a lemon, and vodka? Well, see, I can't crush the television because I can't even dump out a bowl of pistachios, or for that matter, a bowl of not pistachios. So obviously, I gotta get the bellbot to do it, so I bring him up to my room. Can you just crush my TV so I can make a cocktail with dead birds? You know the room with the parrot? Well, there's some odd stuff going on in there, you know. But I don't want to go to the parrot room. I'm sick of the parrot room. I guess I'll go there, hint, hint. Bomb ticking away nicely, is it, sir? Yes, yes it is. Bellbot needed urgently. Give me a break, will ya? No. Can I pull on your light switch? Okay, but seriously, can you pick up the TV? Nothing I like better than a nice piece of taking, lifting, and carrying. I'm here to serve. Take the TV. Nothing I like better than a Carry nice piece of taking, lift. Nothing I like better than a nice piece of taking, lifting, and carrying. I'm here to serve. Place your hands on the television and work against gravity to lift the TV. I've got a strange urge to throw a TV down the well. I bet it'd make a radical sound. Please! God damn it! Throw the TV down the well. Mm -hmm. What's that very faint aroma? I can just barely smell. What is it? I killed your TV, you avian ass blaster. So now I gotta get a flock of pureed starlings, and if you think that's as simple as running a bunch of birds through a fan, oh, my sweet summer children, you have to make sure that the barbot gives you a glass, and then, for reasons I am not privy to, the first dispenser on the chicken machine in the third class now gives you pureed starling, but only if you put a chicken under it, and you have to hold the glass under the chicken while it's dispensing, or else you won't get it. And if you fill the glass with the wrong thing, you can't just dump it out, you have to get another glass, and once you have that, you have to find the vodka. For some reason, the barbot does not have have vodka. Hey, Jordan, uh, I'm, I'm afraid I wouldn't have anything of that nature here. <laughs> this is a lie. He is lying. The robot is lying to me. He has vodka, so you have to return to him with the three pieces of a four-piece puzzle, and then, you won't even know, right? You won't even know this, but when he asks you what was in that glass of pureed starling, you better goddamn tell him, and quick, or else the whole thing is fucked. Oh, I thought of starling puree. Not my lucky day, I suppose. What? And then finally you can get that piece on top of the bar you could have probably reached with a long stick. Hey, you see this perch that the parrot is on? That's Titania's central core. So what does the parrot want? The parrot wants chicken. You need to get him a chicken. So you go get yourself a chicken, you bring it down, it's all cold so he doesn't want it. Where's the steaming fat? Where's the hot running grease? This is no chicken! This is some dirty no good health food! So you pack it up and send it through the succubus system, and the succubus, a fucking robot, eats the chicken, because it loves chicken. Ah, chicken. I love chicken. Oh, whoops. I seem to have accidentally swallowed it. So what you have to do is coat the chicken in sauce, like tomato or mustard. I hate chicken with sauce on. But we're getting ahead of ourselves because the sauce doesn't stay on the chicken because it's too greasy. So you have to wipe the chicken off with the napkin that you found after poking the maitre d's ass for five minutes. And then you get the sauce on it, but then, once you put the mustard on it, you have to send it through the succubus, back to the parrot room, take it out of the succubus, wipe the mustard off. Eww, what's this muck on it? What's this mustard muck? Eww. And don't just give it to the parrot. He's not gonna do you any favors just because you give him a chicken. Oh no, you have to lure him away from the perch with the chicken so you can take the perch. But only if you lure him on the left side, not the right, because it doesn't work otherwise. Chicken, chicken, ah! Be still, my beating heart! All right, you know what? I have all the pieces now. Let's just put Titania back together and get the fuck off this ship. I'm terribly sorry about the parrot. Oh, fuck off. No, really. I know how it must have been for you. So now we get to the last puzzle in the game, which requires a special pair of red and blue anaglyph 3D glasses, which I don't have because I got this digitally. And then you gotta plot out the course to Earth on the 3D star chart, and you need to use the picture from the desk at the beginning of the game. You remember that? The game gave me the option to not do that and let Titania get off her lazy ass and do it for you, because that's her fucking job. Back on Earth, Leovinus, played by Douglas Adams himself, left a message for you. Good afternoon. My name is Leovinus. You probably know that. I'm sorry about what's happened to you. It's funny because you made this. As for me, don't try to look for me. You won't find me. My life's work is done, and I've gone fishing.
Those last few lines hit me hard, kids. Douglas Adams died in 2001, a few years after this game was released, and I just loved his books. They were brilliant, laugh out loud, funny, and a joy to read. But his games are a torturing slog through puzzles that only Douglas Adams and people with traumatic brain injuries can comprehend. And they're designed to be that way, to provoke anger and frustration, to put as many obstacles to success in your way that even playing the game becomes a battle of attrition. And now that I'm here, at the end, I can safely say that I know the password to deactivate the bomb. It's nobody likes a smartass. But as a wise captain once said, Fuck this shit. Three, two, two one. one. Six out of ten.